All right, I'll share with you three incidents that have taken place this month, uh, which I thought were worth sharing, even though it's just uh, 10 days into the month of May. Uh, the first one is uh, my client, uh, whose permission I've taken. Uh, this is one of my, you know, uh, long-standing clients who has been in touch with me for quite some time. Generally, I tend to uh, give advice if a client asks me, okay, help me focus in this area or guide me in that area, whatever. Now, am I right most of the time? Yes. Whether you believe it or not. Am I right all the time? No. Um, does the client follow most of my advice? Yes. Uh, others, I wouldn't work with the client. But does my client follow all the piece of advice? Of course not. Okay. However, there are certain parameters or piece of advice I expect. Sorry, just uh, drank soda. So let me drink one. Mm. <clears throat> the carbonated water always gives you burp. Okay, so uh, what I was saying was... Uh, does the client follow every bit of my advice? No. But there are certain parameters or certain pieces of advice which are very critical and important. Uh, some of them being um, what you do with your money or relationship, marriage or career path, you know, career change. Those are some very critical ones. However, this particular uh, piece of advice was critical and that was marriage. Generally, what I tend to tell my clients, especially the ones who are building their career, starting up their career and need to be obsessed about it. If you take on marriage, um, it's like a double-edged sword. Either it'll work or it'll work to help you or it'll work to harm you. And what happens is when you're especially climbing up and things are going good and Things are looking promising. You got a good career, good job, good salary. Of course, you'll attract um, people who find that attractive, the proposition, the future potential. So when I work with my clients, obviously they are climbing up the ladder and getting a better salary. So this guy also climbing up the ladder, getting a better salary. And lo and behold, his mother and father decided, uh, hey, it was high time to find a suitable girl. You know, like Russell Peter says, you know, my boy will marry a nice girl. And uh, I guess uh, he was too obsessed about his career that the first girl whom his parents found for him turned out to be a little bit too much for him to handle. Um, she was beautiful. I'll give that much. She was really good looking. But there were a lot of red flags which I told him, boss, it's going to backfire. Now, what the red flags are, I can't share with you because, uh, you know, want to keep their identity private. I don't want people, someone finding out, hey, you know, it's a small world. Okay. So there were a couple of red flags and I told the guy, listen, I think it's going to backfire. Now, here's what happens. When you tell something to a client who's close to you and who doesn't want to listen, but he doesn't want to hurt your feelings... He generally does things quietly. It's like a small child, you know. The child knows. Mummy and daddy will shout if they come to know. So they do it hiding. Whether it's eating a chocolate, meeting their boyfriend, bunking classes. Okay. So without informing me, um, I guess, you know, he doesn't have to. He went ahead. He gave his mother and father the green signal. They decided to process the marriage, like my other client. Lo and behold, <laughs> he contacts me and just informs me I got married. He decided to tell me after he got married, that he got married. Because he was, you know, superstitious of the fact that if he would inform me before getting married or on the day of the marriage or something would jinx the marriage. So he decided to inform me after he got married, after the honeymoon, after everything, you know. So I was like, okay, fine. He said, sir, uh, please don't be angry with me. I'm sorry if I hurt you. 
Uh, I said, you, you, I'm not in love with you. I'm, you, you're not my boyfriend or I'm not your girlfriend or, you, you know, you're not my girlfriend or something. Like, hurt me. Come on, man. It's, you paid me to give you the right advice. I give you the right advice. You don't want to follow it? Fine. That doesn't mean, and I told him, that doesn't mean your marriage will fail. My gut feeling says it's going to be slightly challenging. I didn't want to use the words like it'll fail or something. I just told him it'll be slightly challenging. So I said, I wish you all the best. I, I'm your well-wisher. I don't want you to fail. Do well. Unfortunately, I wish I was wrong. It turned out to be the, exactly the way I predicted. Now, I cannot give the reasons why. Because right now they have a legal issue going on. It's a very ugly legal battle. Very ugly. Uh, see, the thing is, you know, these red flags that I talk about, it's through experience. Okay? Remember this much that today's girls, relationships, they have a lot of information. They get a lot of people, you know, buzzing in their ears. They get a lot of access to social media. They get a lot of bad advice. And then when you have your mother and father who's busy pumping hot air and making your head even bigger, that you are the glorious, you deserve better, and your friends also saying that, and they're te telling you, teach him a lesson, and uh, you don't need him, and things become ugly. And especially if the mother and father have contacts and connections. Uh, so when you're in love, it's all lovey-dovey. But when uh, you're not, when you don't see things eye to eye, becomes very ugly and now he's in a very it's going to be a very long lengthy legal battle and this is not only affecting him it is affecting his work it is affecting his friendships it is affecting his peace of mind and it's costing them a hell lot of money so this is the first cautionary tale that i want to give you Please, you know, when, when things are in the honeymoon phase and things are good, let's say, for example, you're investing in the stock market or cryptocurrencies when the market is booming, everything is good. Everyone will love you. Everyone will want to associate with you. Um, you will have great plans. You'll want to make millions, billions and whatever. And any Tom, Dick and Harry can jump and make money. But it's when times are bad that you'll really come to know what's what. So never make decisions when you're emotionally high or when you're in the honeymoon phase. How long will this take? My gut feeling, I spoke to one of my lawyer friends. He said this might, this legal battle can take upwards of five years, five to seven years. You can imagine what it's going to do to this guy. So the first cautionary tale, please don't get into a legal relationship and complicate your life. Okay? Especially when your goals are something else. Second one. Uh, this is once again a guy. You'll be shocked. It's a guy. Okay. Uh, the guy is from Europe. He has been taking my advice. He has low self-esteem issues. And uh, also he has been in touch with me, mentoring, but not frequently. He takes my advice here and there. And he wanted to do something which normally females do. And what was that? He wanted to opt for surgery. And why surgery? Why? He was getting bald. He wanted to do his cheeks, his nose. His, uh, he wanted to do all those things. I said, don't. So finally, I convinced him to only get his teeth done. He had you know, teeth back and front. And I said, get the teeth done. Forget everything else. Fine. Uh, he takes a bank loan and uh, he finally goes to, out of all the places, he goes to Turkey. Why? Because Turkey is cheap. Now, we had communicated and we had agreed upon, he will do his teeth only. Teeth only. Okay. You yeah, know, getting all the stuff done and ruining of the teeth and... He took a kind of vacation, be there, fine. 
he comes back after his holiday long it's a lengthy holiday and i tell him let's talk on video and he doesn't want to talk to me on video i'm like why uh, no sir i there's something i want to tell you okay he's like sir i i didn't get only my teeth done i said okay what else did you get done and in that duration that he was there for those couple of months he got his teeth he got his chin he got his cheeks he got his nose he got something for balding now the part that really horrifies me is it didn't go as per plan seriously it didn't go as per you you are talking of a 20 something year old young man and he's now he's actually he's so affected he's he's even thinking of suicide and i had to literally you know talk to him and communicate for him to go meet someone who can give him emotional support and seek professional help because once you operate and all that you can't reverse it he didn't agree to come on video he is that afraid now but he did send me a few photo he didn't send me his full photograph of his face that also he sent bits and pieces and i was oh my goodness i was like uh the second thing is i don't know the moral of this story is don't play around with your body especially your face see in my case i got tattooed lucky for me it didn't backfire lucky for me in his case he got surgery done it's not working out well and second one when you're doing something permanent please don't seek the cheapest solution he out of all the places he could have got it done instead of going to a market that was regulated in europe he went to turkey you can't sue anyone there man and now what what will he do he has to fly down every time when he has to get a modification or correction done he already took a bank loan i told you so that's number 2 and last if not the least this one is not my client this is actually a friend who not not friend a person who i know who is based here young girl she is now she is in her early 20s now right now so what is the problem well i did like her i did think of you know kind of uh, that am i single as thinking for relationships and whatever but obviously i was not her type so that was fine but we continue be friends she was very a very sweet girl very very sweet slim now last year finally you know we kept in touch even until i got married and all that. i introduced my wife to i told her i like this girl once upon a time they were friendly very amicable last year we found out that she is pregnant not married but pregnant so we were like very happy for her i was very happy for her and uh, pregnant means and she gave birth to the baby okay so last year so we were very happy and uh, you know every time she would show a photograph she works in one of the convenience stores she showed the photograph and we used to always give our best wishes and all that a boyfriend she's not married huh? a boyfriend also works for a convenience store now 7 months my wife was not there she was also i don't know where she went today today me i was going with my wifey we just going to the market shopping then we went to the convenience store because my wife had asked me did you meet her how is she you know my wife was just asking maybe she thought i would go and meet her secretly when she was on there i said i don't know she is nowhere to be seen i after we finished shopping the evening market we decided to stop at the convenience store there are multiple ones we went to one took my daughter went there and lo and behold i saw her i was like wow hey how are you you're in this new place and then i got shocked and the reason i got shocked is because she is pregnant again and i couldn't believe my eyes i was like you have another baby and she said 
Ah, Loy, yes, I have. And now you'll be like, Why, so what is the problem, man? Well, the problem is, number one, she's not married. That guy was just her boyfriend. So he doesn't need to take care of her. Number two is she, I told you, she works in a convenience store. So she doesn't earn a very big salary. She earns a small salary and she has to take care of herself and the baby. And now she has to take care of herself, the baby and a new baby. Number three is when she gives birth, obviously she'll have to give the baby's custody to somebody else because she's alone. Now she'll have two babies and both will not be with her. I told my wife, with the salary that she gets, which is hardly, I think she gets, uh, I think $500, $600, I'm not too sure. It is tough to manage one person, becomes very tough to manage one kid. Now she'll have two kids. How will she take care of herself, her two children, plus she takes care of her family. And I was telling my wife, what the hell is wrong with this? And she's only in her 20s, huh? only in her 20s and she's not married. And I didn't ask her about her boyfriend because I couldn't see a boyfriend anywhere. He also works at a convenience store. I couldn't see him. So he has left. And looking at her face, she didn't look like she was in a very happy place. Now, all these three incidents are, you know, not life changing or something very shocking. But these are decisions that cannot be reversed. Okay, marriage, you can get into a divorce, but there's a price to pay. Surgery, you can't. Okay, even the statues, I can get them removed, but it'll cost me a lot of money. But lucky for me, it's not a bad thing. Until now, at least. Now I'm 47, going to be 50, so I guess I'm okay. But having a child and working a normal job that pays you a small salary, how, how are you going to manage, man? I don't know what's, I, 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 for the life of me, can't understand what people are doing and why they are doing it. I don't know how people can take such decisions so lightly. I just want to conclude by telling you, please, please, whomsoever you are, all these decisions, all these incidents that I'm talking are very real. They are very, very real. And uh, they will change your life in such a manner that they'll impact your life in such a manner, you will not be able to reverse it. Now, once you have a child, what do you do to get rid of it? You can't. In Thailand, you can't get an abortion. Surgery, what, what can you do? Once a mistake is made, it's... And this guy got married and now he's in a legal limbo. She's not going to withdraw. She's going to take his pound of flesh. What do you do? It's affecting him. His career is everything. Hmm. Sometimes my job as a mentor, I say things that people do not like. But in the long run, I guess, because of the mistakes I've made, the wisdom from those mistakes and the life experiences. Like sometimes people say, oh, what about your tattoos and all that? Like I, uh, I told them, I'm lucky. I'm just lucky I got away with it. Not many other people are so lucky. Anyway, this is what I wanted to share with you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think these people have made a serious mistake? And among those three, which one do you think is the biggest one? Good, bad, ugly. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, I sincerely hope these guys can get over it. All right. Let me know if you're interested to know more stories like this. Over the 20 years plus... I've had plenty of stories like this I can share with you if you're interested. Good, bad, ugly, feel free, comment down below. This is me signing off. You guys take care.